Don't go anywhere because we've got Darren Jones with us actually for Labour this morning. Darren, I'm sure you've been listening um, to the report there. What should we ask Labour about what they should be doing if they take if they win the next election? Well, this is a national plan. This is not just about defence. It's about the entire government. So, what is what would a uh, a future Labour government do about the idea that we don't have a national plan for the defence of the UK, which is something that was in the Cold War, led by the Cabinet Office, the Prime Minister. It's an all-of-government effort. Would, would you be wanting to do that? Uh, good morning. Um, uh, well, I think if you listen to Rachel Reeves's May's lecture on our approach to the economy from a few weeks ago, uh, she explained why she coined the term securonomics, because the UK is not resilient enough to global shocks, whether that is war, climate or pandemics. Uh, and for too long, we've not had strong enough supply chains to uh, bolster our ability to withstand those events. And as a consequence of that, people suffer the consequences around inflation, things like energy bills and the cost of living that we've experienced over the past uh, few years. So we do agree with you um, uh, from the Labour Party's perspective that the UK is not resilient and as strong as it should be, and that measures should be taken. Uh, specifically on defence, uh, one of the things that we've said that we are going to have to do if we win the election later this year is to undertake a strategic defence spending review. We can't do that in opposition because the government doesn't release the information, uh, but it's very clear that the way in which the uh, defence budget is being spent, the kit that we're procuring, the people that we have available to do the work to ensure that we are ready for a potential conflict in the future uh, needs to be better. Uh, and John Healy, our Shadow Defence Secretary, has spoken at length about how that process will work under a future Labour government. Darren Jones, how comfortable are you about selling arms to Israel? Well, we have a process for uh, licences for arms exports, which the government uh, maintains. There is supposed to be reporting to Parliament about how that operates, although it hasn't really worked in the past. You'll remember that I used to chair a committee that had some um, uh, standing on this issue, and we were never really given the information by government. Uh, if there's evidence that arms are being used uh, in breach of those licences, uh, then there should be the consequences of breaching those licences, which should be that licences shouldn't be uh, granted going forward. Lord Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, has said that off the back of uh, what's happened to, tragically to the seven aid workers over the past day or so, um, that he wants to establish the facts before considering what further action should be taken. And I suspect he'll be looking at this issue amongst others. What are your thoughts on what happened yesterday? Well, it's unacceptable. It's deeply sad. One of the people killed is a relative of one of my constituents. And so we've been talking to the families here in Bristol about it. These were aid workers. Aid workers are supposed to be uh, protected. They're there to provide aid to people in desperate circumstances. Yes, they put themselves uh, in war zones in order to do this work, but they do so on the basis that they are identified. You can see in your own shots there, the vehicle was identified you know, on the roof uh, for a reason. Uh, the route they were taking, we understand, had been pre-notified. Uh, aid workers must be protected. They should not uh, be killed in these ways. And that's why, uh, in the very first instance, questions need to be answered about how this could have happened in the first place. That's the least the families um, should be given. And the families that you um, are dealing with, how have they reacted to this devastating news? Well, as you as you can expect, I mean, you expect aid workers to be protected. They're doing God's work in places in these circumstances. And to find out that they've been killed is just it's just heartbreaking. Um, you know, we're supporting my constituents as, as, as best we can. Um, and it's a tragic loss for them and for the international aid community. And the, the sad thing is that the consequence of, of this is that it's making it harder for more aid to get into the region because the routes for aid and the aid workers that have to do the work are at more risk than they, than they should be, which is making the situation even worse in Gaza than it would have been in, in the first place. It's, it's, it's deeply sad and just reminds us why, you know, this war has gone too far. We need a ceasefire. We need the hostages released by Hamas. We need people to get around the table and back to political dialogue. Um, I can't see how it could get even worse than it already is. Surely it must be time to, to, to agree to that ceasefire and start to figure out a political solution going forward. 
Uh, back home, almost all the papers reflecting on an interview we did uh, yesterday uh, about this time with the Education Secretary over um, the, the Justice Bill that suggests that uh, rough sleepers could be criminalised if they smell. Um, Labour's view. That's a, it's very odd, isn't it, Kate, to be honest? I mean, I would much rather the government was thinking about how to help people who are homeless not be homeless. Uh, homelessness has increased significantly under the Conservatives over the past 14 years. And there are not easy solutions. You know, in Bristol, for example, you know, we have our share of people who are whether street homeless. In my own constituency, we've got an increasing number of homeless people living in caravans and mobile homes in kind of green spaces. Um, we've got a waiting list of 20,000 people now in the city. That's double what it normally is for council or social housing. The cost of rent is going through the roof. People's mortgages are more expensive. You know, housing is a pretty basic requirement. The specifics, for Mr Jones, about suggesting that if people smell, they could be arrested. Oh, no, sorry. I, I, I disagree with that, clearly. I mean, I, I was just saying, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. They should be focusing on how to tackle homelessness as opposed to coming up with what sounds to be criminal law that I don't even understand how it could be enforced. I mean, are, you, are you going to ask a police officer to make a judgment as to whether somebody smells and is in breach of the law and then you're going to pass that? How do you evidence that to the Crown Prosecution Service? How is a judge supposed to make a judge? I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. And, and the you government campaign as Labour to thing. get that removed before it becomes law? Well, uh, to be honest, Kay, I can't quite remember where it is in the House of Commons as to whether it will become law or not Back before the next Easter. election. Sorry, I interrupted Back you. to you guys after Easter. It comes back to the Chamber after Easter. All oh, right, OK. Well, I suspect we'll make the same arguments that I've just made, but the Conservatives have got a majority in the House of Commons, and if they want to pass it, they can. But look, I, I, I think this is probably just the Tory party trying to play culture wars, dividing lines, trying to say, you know, I don't know, what are they trying to say? I don't know that Labour supports trying to help people not be homeless and the Tories will lock homeless people. I'm not really sure what they're trying to get at here, but it seems to me that it's the chaos of the Conservative Party once again uh, coming through. There's lots of things we should be doing in the House of Commons. I suspect trying to criminally sanction people um, who have not had the ability to access uh, showering facilities is, 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 not, is not one of them. OK, good to talk to you, as always. Uh, we'll see you when you're back from recess. Thank you.